Welcome everybody. Today we are learning English from a Thanksgiving episode of American Dad. I've picked the best phrases from this episode and I will explain them so that you too can steal from your own family. Let's do this. Why would you learn English from some suit and tie professor when you could learn it from a cocky CIA agent, a cross-dressing alien, and a teenage boy with killer genitalia? Open up that notepad app and get ready to learn English from Oh boy, it's well to say Good morning, USA Our story begins with Stan Smith. His family is preparing for their Thanksgiving dinner. Stan has invited his half-brother, Rusty. Stan loves having Rusty over for Thanksgiving because Rusty is poor and gives Stan the opportunity to show off how much money he has. Roger, the alien living with Stan's family, says, Oh, please, you have him over every year just so you can feel like a big shot. Oh, please, you have him over every year just so you can feel like a big shot. Big shot is just slang for a very important person. This could be someone that is just very rich, very powerful, or overall very successful. Oh, please, you have him over every year just so you can feel like a big shot. Haley, Stan's daughter, then says, you totally get off on how much more successful you are than your half-brother. You totally get off on how much more successful you are than your half-brother. To get off on something means that you get pleasure from that thing. Haley means to say that her dad Stan gets pleasure from showing off his success to his half-brother. But be careful how you use this phrase because it's also used to describe what pleases you sexually. You totally get off on how much more successful you are than your half-brother. The doorbell rings and Stan goes to answer it. He says, I might be wealthier than Rusty, but it's not like I rub it in his face. It's not like I rub it in his face. To rub something in someone's face means to make them feel bad about something and constantly remind them about it. If you're poor and I'm constantly reminding you how poor you are, I would be rubbing it in your face. So Stan is denying that he shows off his wealth to his brother Rusty. I might be wealthier than Rusty, but it's not like I rub it in his face. Rusty and his family arrive. Stan shows Rusty his very expensive TV. Steve shows off his very expensive video games. And Francine shows off her oven with four, count them, four burners. The two families sit down for the Thanksgiving dinner and Stan tells the story of the first Thanksgiving. You see, the Europeans, who were angelic and pure and definitely not racist, came to America and began building a new society. But when winter came, the colonists fell on the verge of death. Good fortune was on their side because the Indians took a break from drug smoking and human sacrifices to help the poor colonists. The two sides celebrated with a feast now known as the first Thanksgiving. A feast is a large meal, usually with lots of people. This word is very common on Thanksgiving because we eat a lot of food with our families. A year has now passed and it's Thanksgiving time once again. Haley has run off with her boyfriend, Jeff, to get married. Now that Haley is gone, Stan's son, Steve, decides to misbehave. He combines his room with Haley's old room by tearing down a wall. Stan is furious and tells Steve that as a punishment, the whole family will be having Thanksgiving at Rusty's house. Stan says, We're going to their gross teepee in Crap Hole, Arizona. We're going to their gross teepee in Crap Hole, Arizona. A teepee is an old style home that was used by the first Americans. Stan's half brother has native ancestry and he's poor. So Stan assumes that he lives in a teepee. We're going to their gross teepee in Crap Hole, Arizona. Stan's idea is that Steve will see how poor and miserable Rusty's life is and he will learn to appreciate all that he has. Stan says, If anyone has the right to complain, it's them. They don't have squat. They don't have squat. Squat is slang for nothing or anything. If you don't have a lot of things, you can say, I don't have squat. If you had a bad teacher in school, you could say, she didn't teach me squat. If anyone has the right to complain, it's them. They don't have squat. It's Thanksgiving day and the Smiths arrive in the desert of Arizona. Rusty comes to pick them up in his beat up pickup truck. Rusty tells them that he found a dead deer in the road and he picked it up so they could eat it. Roger says, 
You Indians really don't waste a thing, do you? Except for time reading the fine print on treaties. Except for time reading the fine print on treaties. The fine print refers to the small text on a contract or document that typically has the important details. Roger is joking about how the first Americans had their land stolen because they didn't read the fine print on their treaties with Europeans. You Indians really don't waste a thing, do you? Except for time reading the fine print on treaties. They arrive at his house and the Smiths are shocked at how pitiful it is. But Rusty breaks their hearts by showing them his real house. Rusty gives the Smiths a tour of his mansion and they can't believe their eyes. This whole time, they thought Rusty was some broke Indian living in the desert, but it turns out he's a total millionaire. Rusty's wife shows Francine her kitchen, fully stocked with private chefs and 86, count them, 86 burners. Rusty's son shows Steve his video games, which turn out to be full virtual reality. On the other side of the house, Roger finds Rusty's stash of booze. From floor to ceiling, it's full of alcohol. And Roger, being a cross-dressing alcoholic, falls in love. Rusty and Stan sit down to talk, and Rusty explains how he got rich. Before he died, Stan and Rusty's grandpa gave them a choice of receiving $20,000 or receiving land in Arizona. Stan chose the money, then lost it all by investing in the metaverse. Rusty took the land and found enough copper on it to make him a millionaire. Stan gets angry and says that Rusty should share the land with him. When Rusty refuses, Stan storms off and cancels the Thanksgiving dinner. The Smiths return home and are now bitter about their life. Steve says, this house blows. This house blows. To blow in this context means to be bad or be terrible. For example, if you're watching a bad movie, you could say, this movie blows. Another slang word similar to this one is to suck. You can say, this house sucks, or this movie sucks. But be careful how you use these words, because obviously, sucking and blowing can mean other things. <laughs> this house blows. After experiencing the good life at Rusty's house, the Smiths are no longer thankful for what they have. They want more. But the Smiths are middle-class normies, and getting more would require hard work and effort. So, instead of doing that they decide to steal Rusty's land. The Smiths head over to Rusty's house. They sneak inside and knock out Rusty and his entire family. The next day, Thanksgiving morning, Rusty wakes up in Stan's house and realizes what's happened. Meanwhile, the Smiths are enjoying their luxurious stolen goods when the doorbell rings. Rusty is at the door with the police who tackle and arrest Stan. The Smiths are taken away in a helicopter. Stan freaks out and accidentally knocks the pilot unconscious. The helicopter spirals out of control and crashes in the desert. The Smiths survive the crash as well as the pilot who is now three-fifths of a man. Only the Americans will get that one. Roger reveals that he has a compass to guide them through the desert and to safety. So the Smiths follow his lead, but after hours of wandering, they realize that Roger doesn't know what a compass is. Roger, this isn't a compass. The Smiths then get attacked by wolves, but still survive? How the hell is this possible? Are these people superheroes? They survive a helicopter crash and a wolf attack. Where the hell were these people when Loki attacked the Earth? Night falls and the Smiths are on the verge of freezing to death, when they are saved by their daughter Haley and her loser husband Jeff. The two of them just happened to be living in this exact part of the Arizona desert. Oh, writing is so easy. And that's it, that's the show! If you have any questions about anything in this video, let me know in the comments. This week is Thanksgiving and I'm gonna be pigging out on some turkey and pie. So don't be surprised if I'm a little bit pudgy in my next video. Like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm that crazy mulatto. Now get the hell out of my face. Like male nipples! They're worthless, they're driving me crazy! <laughs>